Non-aggression pact with Bulgaria. That I can get. I can agree to. Uh, so okay. Romania has not made any kind of agreement with us. Neither, frankly, is Hungary. But we're going to march in and guard the borders against Romania because we are now buddies with Bulgaria. At the moment, at least. And we can always switch these over to the Alpine front if we need to. Or to the German front against the uh, French. Again, if we need to. Or to Africa, if we want some extra oomph in the African theatre. Where is Recon useful? What are my thoughts on 7 inf, 2 artillery and what's best all round? Motorised inf, support art and a couple of tanks. 7 infantry, 2 artillery I think is like the standard template, which I would recommend to everyone. It's just very, very strong. In terms of where is recon useful, generally everywhere, because the better your recon, the more likely you are to have good strategies in combat. Unfortunately, I'm not doing any combat right now, so I can't show you what I mean by that. But every 24 hours, both commanders will choose a tactic, and many of them are like rock, paper, scissors. So I could choose rock, they would choose scissors. My rock beats their scissors, we do a damage bonus. If you have high recon, you are more likely to get a positive tactic against your opponent or a tactic that counters your opponent or at least negates them than if you have poor recon. If you have poor recon, then they'll have the advantage against you. So having recon companies in any division is useful, but especially ones which are going to see heavy combat duties like frontline and mechanized tanks. And no, I wouldn't say that motorized infantry, support artillery, and tanks are the best all-round division. Those are what I would use as my breakthrough divisions, which is what these guys are. They're quite light. I, I would prefer medium tanks to light tanks. But support artillery for the soft attack and then just motorized for the organization so they just keep going. What do signal companies do? They increase the speed that units will reinforce each other in battle. So, as I talked about earlier, every battle has a maximum combat width. Generally it's 80, but for every province in addition to the two original provinces fighting each other, adds another 40 combat width. Then if a unit retreats, there's basically a gap left in that area, and then new units will reinforce that gap depending on your um, initiative, which is your signal company. I think it's called initiative. Ordini. Initiative, yeah. So the higher their initiative, the faster they'll reinforce and plug the gap. Because if all of your divisions are broken in a battle, then you lose that battle. Even if you have units there with full organization in the reserves, they have not made it to the front line, you lose that battle, you're pushed back. If your soft attack is high enough, and you can just destroy the enemy organization that quickly, that can be a great strategy, which is one of the things I'm kind of doing with my artillery units. And that's also a reason to go very artillery heavy in your breakthrough divisions, like the tank divisions. Maintenance helps tanks and motorized go stronger. Uh, I need to remind myself on this because I almost never use maintenance. Where is it? Maintenance companies will increase the reliability of your stuff and they will also increase capture chance. So reliability is how much attrition you take. So if you're in an area where you take a lot of attrition, like in mountains, having maintenance companies can be very effective because they will reduce just the base terrain attrition that you take. They also add capture rate chance. So whenever you fight an opponent, they will drop a bunch of equipment. If you have a maintenance company, you will just steal it. And then you can equip your own units with their gear. Whereas a logistics company reduces your supply and fuel usage. So I would say generally you want logistics in tank divisions because they will reduce the fuel. And tank divisions also tend to be very big and hungry units in terms of supply. So give them logistics and you'll lessen that impact. Logistics is also useful in areas where there is low infrastructure like Russia. Tank brigade should have maintenance engineers, logistics and recon. I would say that you probably want... For tanks, recon, logistics, support artillery, support rocket artillery, possibly support AA, depending on how your air force is compared to theirs. Or signals, yeah, sorry. Signals instead of support AA. 
And signal companies are almost a must-have for the Marines, that's true. Like, you want to have a really good reinforcement rate for Marines. Otherwise, the naval invasion just fails. Engineers are really purely defensive, so if you have units that need to hold the line, then give them engineers. Or if you have, for example, in a um, breakthrough unit, you probably should have a couple which are pure breakthrough. So these are going to be like heavy artillery units, heavy mechanized maybe with lots of tanks. Their organization is going to be quite low. And then you have a bunch of support motorized to basically plug the gaps as your breakthrough units punch a hole. So those support units, which would also be motorized so they can keep up with the tanks, would have engineers. The tanks not necessarily. So where uh, this this is more of a... Uh, support unit. So this is a classic motorized template. For a breakthrough, you probably want something more like... That's too low organization. Probably something like this. Maybe even this. I mean, this one's a bit iffy because the organization is so low, but you just want to have a lot of breakthrough and especially a lot of soft attack. I mean, what you could even do is have these be um, SPGs as opposed to light tanks or medium tanks. This would be better with medium tanks, not lights. Don't usually ever see people use rocket artillery. I'll take a look at that, thanks. If rocket artillery is good, because what they do is they will eventually do more soft attack than artillery, because these aren't the only upgrades. You've also got these. These also affect rocket artillery. So it's quite technology intensive, like you have to do a lot of upgrades to them, but they will out damage regular artillery. But only after you've done a bunch of those upgrades. Initially, Regular artillery is better. And then you've also got motorized rocket artillery, which is much the same as motorized artillery and used to be the only motorized artillery you had. Now that motorized artillery is a thing, motorized rocket artillery isn't nearly as useful. What's the best all-round division template? Seven infantry, two artillery. What are my thoughts on best upgrades for tanks and planes? Tank reliability and plane engine? Plane engine, 100%. Always get that one first because it increases your agility, which is just your combat ability, and also increases their range. The faster they are, the further they can go on one tank of fuel. So always build their engines first. Also, that doesn't cost any reliability, so it's easy to do. Then after that, either range or attack, depending on what you need. If you're struggling to reach your opponent's range, if you're not, attack. And then offset the durability penalties, reliability penalties, the reliability upgrades. In terms of tanks, again, depends what you're using the tanks for. Heavy tanks, you probably want to stack up their armor so they can provide more armor for the division they're protecting. If you're getting a lot of breakthrough, then you probably want engines for movement so they can keep up with your motorized units. Or, I'm trying to remember what the other tank upgrades are. Reliability, guns, armor, and... Nope, it's gone. What's the other tank upgrade? Engines. Engines, if you need to keep up with your support units, so motorized, you will need to put engines on most things to keep up with motorized. Main guns can be good if you're using SPGs. Reliability to offset any other penalties, and then armor if you're using possibly medium tanks, but definitely heavy tanks. And also, another thing to bear in mind, it is absolutely feasible to do something like this. Imagine that's a heavy tank, not a light tank. Because 50% of your heaviest armor is given to the entire unit. So if you have a heavy tank with an armor of 80, then 40 of that armor will apply to the whole unit. And if your opponent can't penetrate the armor of that unit, you suffer 50% less damage. Organization and strength. Fate of Czechoslovakia. German troops are crossed into Bohemia and Moravia, ostensibly to restore order to the regions in the wake of the collapsing Czechoslovakian government. In Prague, the occupying forces announced the creation of an autonomous protectorate within the German Reich. 
With German support, Slovakia has been declared independent under the leadership of Josef Tiso. The nation of Czechoslovakia is no more. All right, Germany, what are you doing? Molotov, Ribbentrop, okay. We still have a bit more time. And we can modify the government once more. It's 39, so we do need to get the material designer. So now... Again, it doesn't actually upgrade guns. This is so different from Kaiserreich, where these would actually, like, give you plus 5% soft attack for small arms, or plus 10 soft attack for artillery. We still have another year before new ship designs become available. Uh, not motorized, that's a waste. No, I think we need to start going for generals. And I really liked the idea of tactical bombing. Plus 15% ground support sounds excellent. Possibly infantry specialist, possibly cavalry specialist, maybe even just those three. Although capital ship upgrade would also be good. We're going with tactical bobbing. Etor Muti. Will this be on YouTube? Yes, it will be. But I don't know exactly when. Things I learn. You can create tank variants. Yep, tanks, aircraft, ships. But not motorized, mechanized support equipment, infantry equipment, or artillery. For some reason. I've never quite understood why it's so limited, but I'm hoping that they introduce all of that stuff in the future. These are all fully trained. Nice. Commanding. And we're even out of commanders. Defensive doctrine won't do any good. We're going to need to wait until we have enough organization. All right, let's start protecting our coastline. In fact, let's start that again, because this is an important order type. So, selecting our unit, we have this one here, which is the garrison area order. Click on that, and you can just start selecting whole states, like I'm doing right now. You'll start hashing them in. And then your units will be given basically an automatic order to defend those areas. I'm specifically doing states on the coast because it's the coastal areas that I want to protect. I don't really care about the internal because that's going to be my frontline divisions. And I'm only doing mainland Italy, uh, Sardinia, Sicily and Cors uh, Balearics, not Corsica. We don't own it. And then you see that these things have also appeared. This is what they are protecting. So we're not guarding forts. That's not their job. We could start to lower resistance, although there shouldn't be any res resistance. Everything's capitulated. Guarding air bases, not your job. Guarding the entire coastline, I'd love to, but there's definitely not enough of you. So we're going to turn that off, and you can see that's a big deal. So they are guarding naval bases, which are places where if enemies attack and land, they'll get supply from those locations. And then the victory points, which is the victory points, as I described them earlier. And it's saying that this will require 30 divisions to defend. Uh, that's fine. Then when I assign a general to this, garrison commanders can actually command three times more troops than they usually can. So we can add another bunch of infantry to that order if we want to. And in fact, I think I will. I'm just going to start queuing up another 24 divisions, which is eating up the majority of my spare manpower, but that's fine. And then once we've got all of this done, I'll be very happy with how Italy is defended. Commanding. Next up, I'm going to start them just training, and they'll still spread out and defend all of that stuff, automatically sailing out to the island regions too. And thankfully, this is a port uh, on the crossing to Corsica, so they'll automatically sit there and guard it. Otherwise, we would have had to manually put somebody there. And now this way it's going to be almost impossible to naval invade us and attack. So I'm hoping that my navy does the job and keeps the enemy at bay, but just in case they don't. We have a very, very large garrison now too. Now this is just something I do. I make garrison units orange. No real reason. 
Just how I identify them. Garrison orders desperately need only guard coastal VP buttons. Well, really all you need to do is garrison the ports. Which is just have that one selected. But I like garrisoning the VPs as well, just in case. Huzzah! Grumbuskin coming in with a Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you very much for that, Grumbuskin. Welcome to the Mordlings. What's the reasoning to have both cast and tactical bombers? Tactical bombers are generalists, they can do everything, uh, while cast does more damage. So if the if the close air support can actually reach the target, then they are great. But I'm a little bit worried, particularly in the oceans, that I wouldn't be able to reach them. Although now that I see what range tactical bombers, sorry, naval bombers actually have, I probably shouldn't have worried. The only real reason I'm doing it now is because I actually invested in the medium aircraft upgrade. So my heavy fighters and my tactical bombers are just better. With hindsight, I probably should have just improved the medium, uh, sorry, the, uh, the close air support or the naval bombers, but never mind. Which is better overall, tactical or strategical? Again, it depends on your mission parameters. Tactical will do a lot less damage, but they're also a lot cheaper. Strategy have... Mm, oh, str strategic bombers have a huge range. They're very defensible, but they also cost a lot. Also, tactical bombers can do ground attacks and naval attacks. Strategic bombers can't. They can only do infrastructure. Okay, so cruisers have been upgraded, so we're just going to start building the battleships again. Like so. And then after this, we may start producing some more low-level submarines. Or tier 2 subs. Pact of Steel completed. Alright, let's see what Germany says. Oh, no, we have to do the treaty with Germany. And we could declare war on Greece. Later. Treaty with Germany. We should ask the Germans to exchange technological secrets for the benefit of our, both of our great nations. Do it. Heh. <laughs> Poet beat me to it. Yes, Grumbuskin, I've now done an actual naval tutorial. So if you head over to the link that Poet has just linked to, uh, that should hopefully explain everything you need to know about the new naval system. I mean, when this war breaks out, I will be doing a lot of naval conflict in the Mediterranean because I'm going to be up against the French Navy and the British Navy. Uh, and I fully intend to put a big dent in their side if I can doing so. Uh, but if you want just like a generic general overview, and this is for everyone else watching, then do go check out that naval tutorial. It should do the job. And here we go. Inv invite to faction from Germany. Accept. Italy have joined the Axis. So now we can see everything that Germany is doing. We are now formally allied with the Germans. So they have very suspiciously parked a couple of tank divisions next to the Netherlands. Not sure why they would have done that. A couple of troops on the... I should know what this one's called. Don't tell me. It's the something wall. Uh, I know it's a focus. West Wall? That's, no, West Wall? Could have sworn it had a different name than West Wall. Maginot is the French side. I'm talking about the German. I don't remember what it's called, though. Siegfried Lion. That's the one. I knew it began with an S. We're juicy. Thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. And they're obviously preparing for a fight against the Polish. Germany does look like they've pumped out a lot of divisions. Even going up against Hungary. Interesting. But no, they are moving over to the Polish border right now. For unknown reasons. 
Okay, so we have finished. Ah, oh, we even spent time repairing. That was not intended. We actually finished all that construction quicker than I expected. Um... Let's go ahead and finish all of Italy. We're just going to do all of the infrastructure here. I'm also going to set up synthetic refineries wherever I can. As a matter of priority, we're going to deprioritize those two. That should do. And then I think I'm going to get a couple more dockyards in Piedmont. Because we are going to need to try to outproduce Britain. They have got uh, 18 dockyards. We have got... Actually, we outnumber them. Interesting. Well, this naval race isn't going to be much of a naval race. We can store 600,000 barrels of oil. <clears throat> Good. Okay, free dockyards. We are just building these two heavy ships now. So, let me think. What do we want? We could get some more submarines out. We could get some more destroyers. Although I'm pretty happy with the state of our destroyer fleets. Are we going to build carriers? No. Too many things to research already without having to worry about carrier variants. I mean, we could probably do with more heavy ships. That's too expensive. This is fine. This is under cost. A little slow, but that's okay. We have three secondaries, so we're going to tear through screens. Good enough heavy attack. Very heavy armor. I don't care about the surface detection. That's not their job. Yeah, we're good. Right, let's design this and build a couple. In fact, we're already building two of the more modern battleships. That's good. Um, what are we going to call this? The Maharo. Save. We'll queue up two of those for production. And then after this, we'll start producing destroyers once these two are launched. Which will be early 1940. So let's also queue up the new destroyer class, which we will need to design. So this is going to have active sonar. This is going to have anti-sub. It's going to have basic torpedoes. Engine. AA. Light battery, and that's it. I don't want these to be too expensive. And then these modern destroyers are going to be called the Slinky Gustavos. Okay, and then after that, we'll start building some of those. Excellent. We need to buy in some more steel. Oh, Germany! Thank you. Why not build some more convoys or screens, because they tend to be sunk every once in a while. I've actually got 40 screens already, uh, so I'm not that concerned about it. Ah, two more battleships, which will require more destroyers. Okay, well that answers that question. Let's actually get you done first, before we lay those down. And then once these are built, we can replace them with new battleships. That works. So let's 
go to the strike fleet. Add another battleship. Add four more destroyers. Add another battleship. Add four more destroyers. Okay, that should do. And we have a tier two destroyer uh, cruiser, which can absolutely join them. Now, how many seas am I going to need to oversee here? One, two, three, four, five. We could do six. That's fine. So I'm going to split these into fleets of two. And that's going to be our recon fleet. So we need to give you a new icon, which is recon. Which is that one. And these are the mine layers. They need the mine laying symbol, which is going to be that one. Okay. Wait, those are escorts. These are recon. My bad. Okay. Low echelon support. Done. Let's go on to dispersed fighting then. Am I using regular fighters or heavy fighters? I'm doing a terrible thing and using both. Speaking of questions, Mordred, what's the use of going medium or heavy fighters? So, regular fighters have a shorter range, but they do more damage and more agility. So if you're fighting against other light aircraft, for example, naval bombers, fighters, or close air support, you want to use fighters. Those are the counter. If, however, you're coming up against tactical bombers, or especially strategic bombers, then you want to use heavy fighters. The only exception to this rule is if you physically can't reach the air zone. So if the air zones are simply too big. So in Europe, this is not going to be a problem because there's a lot of different air bases and the air zones tend to be quite small. But if you're over in Asia where the air zones are a lot bigger, then you probably want to use heavy fighters just so that you can actually reach the whole of the air zone and therefore your aircraft will be more efficient. So it is actually a good idea to produce lots of fighters and a couple of heavy fighters and then have those heavy fighters on interception to shoot down enemy bombers. Right, next production thing. We are going to start doing advanced machine tools so we can get our production efficiency up. How many ships does France have? That's a good question. About 140. We have 160. Britain has 300, 290. So between them, they'd still very much outnumber us. Although Germany will be tying a couple of them up. Although Germany's fleet is smaller. American and British gunboats were attacked by Japanese aircraft in separate actions today while evacuating Western civilians from the front line in the war between the Japan and China. Despite being clearly marked as an American vessel, the USS Panay was hit by two bombs and sunk, with three American and one Italian citizen killed and others wounded. In a separate attack on the HMS Ladybird, one British sailor was killed. Both the American and British governments have issued strong protests. The incident highlights the increasing tension between the three foremost naval powers.